the last time I saw this was 1974. <laughs> and that's profound to me, because um, uh, I, I wouldn't have imagined it. I grew up in Mexico, partially, um, and I had traveled in, to Vietnam and other places during the Vietnam War, not as a, not as a soldier, but as a merchant seaman in the, in the Merchant Marine, and to Japan and uh, Korea and a number of other places. I just found that I really enjoyed these other cultures, and they didn't have a representation within Western art. My interest started off actually in with Near Eastern textiles, particularly kilims, uh, uh, Iranian, uh, Persian kilims, and ikat, um, the silk weaving technique. And I tried to repair with my friend Robert Kushner, also in this exhibition, because we were students together. We had this idea that we could buy textile, key limbs particularly, and repair them and take them back to the store owner and sell them back to him at a profit. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> and I realized at one point that I, I'm not going to weave something. I don't have that skill. I, I'm not that patient, you know. Uh, and I found a shortcut, and the shortcut was taking found fabric and painting a form that is like a Near Eastern textile form that I found uh, interesting to me as something that I could translate into something that would be a textile that is also me as a Western artist painting. My first contact was with Amy Golden, who was one of my teachers, uh, as well as Bob Kushner's. And she was friends in New York with Joyce Kosloff, and they introduced me to Holly Solomon and Gordon Mata Clark. And Gordon Mata Clark ran a, a, a place, in, a food place in Soho called Food, one of the only restaurants at the time. And they all worked there, um, or volunteered there. And even when I was there visiting, I would wash dishes or something like that, and, and, or serve or do something to help out. Um, and so it was a community in a way. I've always felt that Magellan or Christopher Columbus did not discover the world or America. It was the hippies that, that discovered the world because they really embraced it. They weren't in opposition to what they found. They were embracing what they found. And that to me is exactly the political aspect of what I think the pattern and decoration movement em embodied. And that would include arts and craft it movements, it would include uh, feminism certainly, it would, in it would include non-Western cultures, it would, it, try it would include trying to open up this hermetically sealed uh, engagement in art making to something that was more inclusive. Were we appropriating? No, I don't think any of us thought so at the time. I think most of us thought we were advocating. A Ludwig Házaspár ellentétben egyébként más európai gyűjtőkkel érdeklődni kezdett a Pattern and Decoration művei iránt már a 70-es évek végén, 80-as évek elején, és az Egyesült Államokba tett látogatásaik során vettek műveket. He invested heavily. So he bought 19 pieces of mine, including this, what I call a pagoda. Um, And that was a really big deal because it's made out of a refriger cardboard refrigerator cartons, uh, and there weren't there weren't many people who would step out of the security of materiality into something that was like edgy or had no had no intrinsic value at all, um, and he was willing to do that. 
a kiállításon látható művek három intézményből, három intézmény gyűjteményéből kerültek hozzánk. A, az Ácheni Ludwig Fórum gyűjteményéből, a Mumok, vagy Múzeum für Moderne Kunst Wien gyűjteményéből, és négy munka nálunk található meg a gyűjteményben.